This is my Thanksgiving sermon. Uh, last, last week was pretty close to Thanksgiving and preached on Thanksgiving then too, but I want to thank God today for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God for healing. Thank God for salvation. I'm going to preach mostly on salvation today. Luke chapter. Luke 17, 11. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, they passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. I want to preach on the title of it, Where Are the Nine? Let's have a word of prayer. Father, yes. come to you in Jesus' name. Bless the reading of the word of God this morning. Help us, dear God, with all of our infirmities and our problems and our troubles and trials and tribulations. Our lack, Lord God, of physical ability. Just come on and follow with the sweet Holy Ghost and do a work this morning. Save that one nearest hell. Revive that backslider. <coughs> Bless the saints. Fire up the ones God is wanting to do something. Yes, Give us, I pray, the fire of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost. Help us God to get something accomplished. Yes, Bless the revival coming up this week. Yes, we everyone in this church house this morning. Take a revival paper home and pray over it if they can't come. And God, I pray that they would come. That we might have an outpouring of the sweet Holy Ghost. Yes. And this church might be revived. Yep. To come living in the lump, light in the world, and salt in the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to talk to you about where are the nine. One time there was a man named Rudyard Kipping. I don't know if you heard of him or not. He was an English poet. He wrote a lot of poems. A lot of poems. And they did some research and said that every word that he wrote, he made $100 off of it. That's a lot of money for a poet. But he got $100 a word. A newspaper recorder came to him one day and questioned him about it. He said, I hear that your poetry brought you $100 a word. That's what they say. He said, well, here's a $100 bill. If you can tell me one word that you wrote that's worth $100, I'll give you that $100. He said, thanks. <laughs> Time to give thanks, amen. Time to give thanks. All right. You got the point now, amen? You've got to give God thanks, amen. But anyway, they had these men here, these ten lepers, had a common had a common problem. They all had leprosy. In those days, and even in these days, I get cards and letters from leper colleges these all the time. Can't help them all, but we can help some of them. Leprosy is a terrible, terrible thing. Ugly, sickening, ungodly, wicked looking. Turn your stomach. Leprosy, they all had it. A type of sin. Leprosy is a type of sin. When you read through the Bible, leprosy always was under a, some kind of a curse, some kind of condemnation. We're all sick unto death, you know. Three lepers one time was arguing. One said, yours is worse than mine. No, his is worse than mine. No, yours is worse than mine. And they argued back and finally one of them said, listen, let's just drop the subject. We're all going to die. You might be an adulterer, you might be a fornicator, you might be a liar, you might be a thief. But yeah, one of you going to hell. You don't get saved. You imagine not who's the worst among us, but all of us are wicked. Yeah. Not that there's none good, no, not one. All have yeah. been yeah. of God. Yeah. These all had left. They had a common problem, and that problem was going to kill them. Come on, preacher. You have a problem it's called sin, and it's going to kill you. So, yeah. preacher, I quit that long time ago. Well, you done enough backyard to kill you, amen. So back to this. Not black, white, not male, female, Jew, Gentile, poor, rich, fat, skinny, bond free. But they all had the same disease and they were all on their way to the graveyard. Yeah. And then Jesus crossed their path. Yeah. 
I'm telling you, Jesus can cross your path this morning and turn your direction from the graveyard to heaven. Amen. I'm telling you, Jesus can make the difference. These men needed help, and it could only come from the Son of the living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. They all stood afar off. Now, in those days, the law said a leper couldn't get within 100 steps of anybody unless it's another leper. A hundred paces away, these lepers had to stay from everybody. They couldn't go home and kiss their wife, couldn't kiss their husband, couldn't kiss their children, couldn't go to the synagogue, couldn't go to the temple, couldn't go to the market. They were quarantined as menaces to public health. They could not mingle with other people. They had to stay with themselves in leper colonies or leper camps or bones of the unfortunate. They had to stay to themselves because nobody else could have anything to do with them because of their contagious condition. They contaminated everything. If they slept on a bed, it had to be burned. If they walked into a house, it had to be burned. If they drunk out of a vessel, it had to be busted. They was contaminated of everything, and it was good for nothing. They couldn't help nobody. They couldn't do nobody any good. They couldn't even associate with people. They had to stay off somewhere. <laughs> they weren't in no penitentiary either. They just couldn't do it. We've got people today, my friend, that are spreading contagious junk and trash and infesting everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to realize you yourself have done enough to condemn you and damn you to hell. All have sinned to the Lord of God and the way of sin is dead. You are going to die because you have sinned. But the only hope you have is in Jesus Christ. That's the only hope you have. These lepers, lepers that started out, began with a brownish red spots on your face, ears, Forearms, thighs, these spots became nodules, and then the skin covering on the nodules busted open and it became a ulcer. And these ulcers, the been tissue began to rot around them, and then began to contract and deform deformity sets in. The nose, the ears, the fingers, the toes, and other tissue rots off. The palate of their mouth would get infected with it and get cut and pain. And their breast stunk. One fellow said you could see the breath in the summertime. And their breath would drive people away from them. And no, they just couldn't get near him. And they was bad off, sick, sorry, sore. Today, if you realize it, if you're not careful, you will spread stuff to other people you didn't really mean to. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to straighten up do the best you can. And Amen. the best you can ain't good enough. We've got to straighten up here. Their breath was called the breath of death. They had to carry a, a garment. Go over and cook them. That's what it says there. They're righteous as filthy rags. They had two meanings. One is a mistress rag, uh -huh. yeah. and the other was a leper's garment. Yeah. The leper had to carry a rag and, under, and cover his upper lip and say, Unclean! Unclean! Breath of death! Breath of death! Red lights on, brush on, tape. Bread of death. Bread of death. And nobody could come near them. They had warned people that they had leprosy. I want you to notice very quickly, my friend, that they had to cover the upper lip. The word was tame. Tame meant unclean, unclean. Can you imagine walking the rest of the house? Tame, tame. Don't come near me. Stay away from me. Here comes your No, no, get away here. My friend, they were miserable people. Yeah, yeah. And they had to cover up that upper lip and tell everybody, stay away, stay away. But here came Jesus. Oh, yeah. Tame, Tame, he kept coming. I'm clean, I'm clean, he kept coming. Amen. Come on, preacher. One time I know I was unclean. Yes. Oh, now I knew I wasn't worth shooting. Come on. Wasn't worth the powder blow my brains out. But Jesus kept coming. He wouldn't all leave me alone and one day I failed. Tame, one day I just gave in to him. Yes. Thank God he'd done what nothing else could do. He'd done what I needed doing. And today I'm trying to keep my breath clean, my body clean, my life clean, so Lord nobody will catch that filthy junk I had. Amen. 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 But there's a pitiful looking sight. Feet rotting off, fingers rotting off, nose rotting off, ears rotting off, lips rotting off, bubbles all over you, nodules and sores. When Jesus walked to the cross, he left a trail of blood in the sand. When lepers walked, they left blood, pus, a pus track. Pus, filth, oozing, putrefying, sores, dropping filth everywhere they went. Before you got saved, that's the way you was. Yeah. Dropping filth everywhere you went. <laughs> Taking your disease and your filth and your crust and your 
sin and spread it everywhere. After God saved your soul, <laughs> start trying to spread healing. Start trying to spread salvation. Try to try be a good boy and a good lady and, and do good things and try to help society and still be a quarantine menace to society. Yes. These people were filthy, ungodly, ugly creatures. They had to live by themselves or with other lepers. Couldn't have any companionship with nobody, no time, no how. But Jesus kept them coming. <laughs> I want to say this before going farther. Jesus got up that morning with lepers on his mind. <laughs> He could have went anywhere he wanted to go. He could have done anything he wanted to do. He could have went to anybody he wanted to go to. And he decided to go to them lepers. One morning, Jesus came out my way. He could have went to you if he wanted to. He could have went to you if he wanted to. But he decided to come my way. <laughs> he decided to come over to old Brother Mull's place and check him out and Get him straightened up. And hey. the preacher stood to preach. Hey. And the God got in the preacher. And then God got in me. And me and the preacher got together at the altar. Hey. And about 25 men and women gathered around me and started praying. And salvation came into my soul. Oh. The leprosy left. And peace came. Hey. Hey. I'll tell you, Jesus got up with lepers on his mind that day. He knew just where to find them. When he got to town, who greeted him? Not the Chamber of Commerce. Not the World Evangelism Association. Come on, preacher. Not the high priests. Yes. <laughs> Lepers. The abode of the dead. The unfortunates. The high priests. Oh, yeah. Samaritan. Uh -huh. And Jews that were so sick that nobody wanted them around them. But they was one greedy. <laughs> when Jesus comes in, my friend, he don't look for up the up. He don't look for the low down. He looks for everybody. Whosoever will, he could came to whosoever he will. And that the day he decided to go after them lepers. Hey. Thank God for a loving Savior that'll go after the weak, the weary, the tired, the sore, the downtrodden, and run out, and those that nobody else wants. <laughs> <laughs> David said, Your mother might let, not want you. He said, But to God will bear you up. When you have no friends and nobody cares, God cares. Hey. Jesus loves you to steal me. He'll heal you of your sin and save your wretched soul and fill you with the sweet Holy Ghost. And you can go down your road and shouting a victory, not spreading puce everywhere you go. Yeah. Hey, glory to God. See, these outcasts, there's one out of ten was a Samaritan. He was unclean to start with. Even without the leprosy, he couldn't go to the priest. Even without leprosy, he couldn't go. He was an outcast himself, but he had leprosy on top of it. These other nine Jews, they could go to the priest and show themselves, but he couldn't. And he's going to turn around and went to the high priest, yeah. the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. You might want the approval of the religious leaders. Come on. You might want the approval of the society. But what you need to do is get the approval of Jesus Christ. Yes, right. yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh. Well, they're called the living dead. They're called dead men walking. But they were all dead in trespasses and sin. And you're all dead in trespasses and sin if you've never been born again. Dead while you're living. The Bible says that. Dead while you're living. If you don't have Jesus, you're just waiting for the great God in hell is all you're doing. Yeah. You've got to have Jesus to escape the damnation of hell. Yes. You can't get out any other way. He's the door. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. You come to Jesus Christ. He's no man goes to the But by me. Right. They contaminate everything. Their own house, the synagogue, the temple. They couldn't go nowhere. Couldn't hug their own babies. Couldn't hug their own children. Well, they met a common Savior. They had a common problem, but they had a common Savior. He can save anybody. <laughs> he can save everybody. Yeah. But whosoever will may come. Every one of them called on the name of the Lord. Verse 13, they all called on the name of the Lord. They all called on Jesus. They all asked him for mercy. And how many of them got it? Every one of them. I'll say, who should have called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He, they called on Jesus for mercy, and he gave them mercy. <laughs> yes. If you call on him this morning, he'll give you what you need. Yes. Yes. You can leave here and oh. shout in the victory like that old leopard when he went and ran after Jesus. None of them ten was sorry they got healed. 
But one of them, he got overboard on thinking. Yeah. We need to get overboard on thinking. We need to really go after God and start thanking him. The common people heard him gladly. These lepers had no pride, no self-esteem, no merit. That's where you need to find yourself. No pride, no self-esteem, no merit. You deserve it. Yeah, yeah. We all deserve it. Yeah. But by the grace of God, we're not born. Yeah. Those of us to be born again. Yes. Friend, we all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. Yeah. And the yeah. wage of sin is death. But to get to God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ways it by three things. When he works, who pays him, and what he gets for working. Because if you sin, I pay, you die. Right. But the gift of God's eternal life. The gift is by three things. A giver, a receiver, and that is a giver. Christmas time's coming, we're going to give gifts. Give it to my giver, to my receiver, and that's what they get. God said, you sin, I pay, you die. But I give. You receive. As many as received him, to them gave the power to the sons of unimitable. Big on his name, John 1, 11, 12. God wants to give you everlasting life. Take your sins away. Make you fit for society. You can joy in your soul and holiness in your life. And you take it heaven and you die. Well, you can't beat God. I mean, he just, he's got it all. Amen. Amen. They had no pride, no self-esteem, no merit. They kept hollering, unclean, unclean. Jesus kept coming. Jesus kept coming. And then finally, they called him Master. When's the last time you got on your knees in prayer and called him master? Yeah. Most people are afraid to call him master because they're afraid to tell him to do something. Oh, come on. <laughs> master. Yeah. So he's not only your savior, he's your Lord. He's your master. Yeah. Master. Like the old colored preacher said, he said this. And I get to him and say, oh, look at my master. Well, look at my road. Well, look at the city, the streets of gold. But first of all, I'll see my master. Yeah. Yeah. My soul. They called him master. Mm. We need to get back to that. Yeah. Too many people said, well, he saved me today, but he's not Lord yet. Uh -oh. I'm still trying to make him Lord of my life. Friend, he's your master, whether you like or whether you don't. Right. If he saved your wretched soul, quit him hauling around that liberal crowd and start to be calling him master. Yeah. Yeah. Paul said, what you have me to do? Yeah. And Paul started doing, he done till he died. Yeah. They called him master. <coughs> Jesus came to town and was greeted by the living dead. He was greeted by those who had no greeting. Had nothing to say except mercy. Have mercy on me. I'm unclean. I'm dirty. I'm filthy. I'm dying. I've got leprosy. I have no hope, no future. I'm on my way to the, to the graveyard. And they found Jesus. Mercy. Mercy. Oh, I love mercy. My God, there'll be more songs about mercy. Think about it. Think about mercy. Can you think of a song about mercy in it? We need more songs with mercy in it. You couldn't think of one, could you? We need more songs about mercy. My God, he's a merciful God. He's a merciful Savior. Full of mercy. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. My soul, I love mercy. If I got what I deserved, I'd be in hell today. But I didn't get what I deserved. I got mercy. <laughs> Mercy. Did the leper? <laughs> Come on, preacher. Did the leper that Jesus touched in another city break the law by coming too close to Jesus? Or did Jesus fulfill the law by coming too close to the leper? He was the Lord of the Sabbath, too, you know. Amen. The leper. And Jesus getting together was against the tradition of the elders. But it wasn't against the tradition of the Father. Amen. The world might say you don't have a chance. You don't have a reason. You don't have a right. But God gives you the right. Yeah. Whosoever will may come. Yeah. I'm 
house of that God said, whosoever will oh, make yeah. it. I woke up one day and realized that included me. I came to Jesus. Well, Jesus came near the leper and he actually touched the one. The Bible said he touched the lepers. That was against the law. But it wasn't after he touched him because he wasn't had leprosy no more. Jesus just does it. The world looks at you and says, you don't have a right. And all of a sudden, you got something that you Well, he's got it. He ought to be in hell. No, no, he's one heaven. Just in a, a twinkle of an eye, you can turn your directions and go the other way. Because Jesus came by, changed their life. The flies blowed them before they died. And the dogs licked them before they died. Flies blowed them and dogs licked them. And they was on their way to hell. Then Jesus came by. Yes. Jesus came by. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. That's the local health department. When a person had lepsy, they had to keep going to the priest to look at him. They say, no, nope, you're still quarantined. No, nope, you're still quarantined. And all of a sudden he said, you're cleansed. Go home to your wife. You're cleansed. Now I can meet with people. You're cleansed. Can you imagine them saying, I'm clean, I'm clean, running up and down the street, hollering, I'm clean, I'm clean. <coughs> Yesterday, they wouldn't touch him. We wouldn't have nothing to do with him. <laughs> when I was out there, I seeing everybody say, need you to save, need you to save, need you to save. Got, now God says, you got too much. Make up your mind. You want me to save or not? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, like, yeah. Friend, Jesus Christ will change your life. Yes. From a man walking full of pus to a fellow walking in the blood. Come on, preacher. Jesus wanted, Jesus said, Go show yourself to the priest. He wanted the priest to see a miracle. He wanted the priest to know who can tell. You know what the reason I live the way I do? I ain't perfect, don't get me wrong. But I live for God. I really do. I, I do. Yeah. I know I do. If I didn't, I'd get on the altar and get back. I live for God. I won't care to look around and see. He's got something. That's right. That's right. He's been somewhere. He done been touched in the heart. <laughs> he knows somebody I don't know. He's been somewhere I ain't been. He's doing something I can't do. You can if you come to Jesus. You know that. Yeah. 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 You yeah. can. Don't say I can't. I can't. You can. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm telling you, you can live for God. Maybe it part of another story, but you can live for God. I'll tell you, you can. Right. 61 wonderful years, I walked to the Lord. I've got to get off that. Nine of them were Jews. They were welcomed down to the priest's house. They didn't welcome down to help, help society. But the Samaritan, he was already unclean before he got leprosy. The priest wouldn't even allow him in town, much less in the church. The Samaritan was wrong to start with, then had leprosy on top of it. So when Jesus saved him and healed him, so he went for a while. <laughs> he, he, went out, out, out of, he went out of bounds. He went beyond the rest of them. They stopped here. He kept going. Don't just sit down and listen to the preacher. Get up and go. Jesus could have gone anywhere he wanted to. Anybody wanted to. Any to who said would have chose them lepers. One day came my way. Imagine them limping off on half rotten feet. Putrefying sores. A terrible appearance. Crying. Tame, tame. Unclean, unclean. Breath of death. Breath of death. They had to sleep with their faces covered to keep flies from blowing them. <coughs> I describe to you a leper. The best I know in my little mind, I describe to you a leper. Now, let me ask you one question. You realize what a sinner looks like in the eyes of God? Total depravity. Nothing about you. Nothing at all. Not one thing could you do to get eternal life. That's right. Not one thing could you do to make 
God smile on you. Mm-hmm. Oh, they get saved. Yeah, right. You have no merit. You have no self-esteem. <coughs> you have no righteousness. They're filthy leopard garments. Even the best you can do ain't good enough. You need Jesus. Amen. When God looks at you, he sees a sinner on the way to a well-deserving hell. But when Jesus Christ saves you, he sees you in the blood. Right. Wash, water, snow. Oh, yes. Come he on. forgets all you sin, cast it behind his back. <laughs> Woo! Come on! Yeah. Forgive me yeah. no more. As far as east and the west, my God, what a God we say. Amen. He told that boy side with his son, be a good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. The old boy jumped up around him. <laughs> he couldn't even walk. He jumped up around him. When you get saved in the grace of God and you see that you're forgiven, you ought to jump up around him. Carry your bed on your back, shout down through the temple. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't supposed to carry that bed. Tell Jesus he told me to. Hey, go hey, talk hey, to one of you. Hey, Bring hey, these folks back that way. We'll just go talk to Jesus. Hey, he hey, might change hey, you some more. Amen. Amen. I've been to the fountain God a drink. I know where I've been. I know where I'm going. Jesus, my Savior, Amen. save this old wretched soul. Give me a song to sing. Hallelujah, Jesus, my King. I'm telling you, it's good to be born again. Ten lepers. All of them got the same healing. One of them appreciated it. A lot more than the rest of them did. Hallelujah. Well, over, if you jump over one more chapter, chapter 18, begin verse 9. Jesus talked about two men went to pray. One of them publican. One of them Pharisee. The Pharisee said, Oh, God, I thank thee that I fast twice a week and I pay tithes. Yeah. And I'm not like this publican. <laughs> God wasn't giving that much attention to that. So you old publican, smoke on his chest. Before God, He'll change your life, yes. save your soul, give the Holy Ghost, give you a song, sing it, a place to go, something. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the next chapter over. Chapter 18, 9 through 14, but I can read that. The, pub, the Bible said that that old pumpkin went down to his house justified. That's all I want to do. I'll live to be a hundred. I'm 81 now. If I make it to a hundred, I'm going to live for Jesus all 19 more years. Oh, yes. Amen. But all I want to do is lay my head on my pillar justified. Get, up, get to my deathbed, look up, and glorify my Jesus. Cross over the back, big wide gulf and enter into the promised land. I'm telling you, that's all you should want is just to be justified. I can't see. We'll do best, kid. Last point. Well, next to the last point. <laughs> like the boy said, I covered three points. Got four more. Watch it. <laughs> they had a common healing. As they hobbled and shuffled along, leaving pus tracks in the sand, they're healed. The hounds of hell couldn't track them no more. <laughs> their breath didn't stink no more. Their footprints didn't leave a sour smell. God will change everything about you, my friend. Hounds of hell barked up my tree every day and every night for 20 years. And Jesus saved me. And they, they'd leave me alone now. They, they, they ain't on my tracks no more. I'm on heading for heaven. Jesus left bloody tracks as he went up to Calvary's Hill. The lepers went pus tracks as they walked through the sand, heading toward the high priest. And all of a sudden they were healed. And one of them turned around and went back to Jesus and fell at his feet on his face. When's the last time you bowed a knee to God? Much less fell on your face at his feet. I might not sing like some of them. I might not preach as good as the rest of them. Can't pray halfway. But when I get on my knees before my Jesus, the words I say might not be eloquent. But I'm telling you, I'm talking to somebody who's listening. Yes. <laughs> you need to fall on our knees before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and let the sweet spirit of God bridge our soul in the Holy Ghost. Rise up with yeah. lepers on our mind. Ah, yeah. oh, sweet Jesus. They got a common healing. He healed all ten of them. 
None of them wasn't as grateful as the other one. One of them really showed off. Hey, you're showing off. Yes, thank you. I got a coat of many colors worth showing. Joseph had one, the rest of God did too. Let them begin to laugh. They begin to rejoice. They begin to shout, clean, clean, clean. Some of them without eyes, without hair, without nose, without ears, without hands, without fingers, without toes. But Jesus restored every bit of it. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> when they got to the priest, they had all their facilities, had all their faculties, had all their, faculties, had all their fingers, all their toes. They had it all restored. Then when you get right with God, he throws that old junk away and gets it all brand new. Oh, yes, come yeah. on, preach it. Come on. All ten called upon the name of the Lord. All ten got mercy. Some of them, without eyes, hands, ears, toes, whatever, they begin to gurgle when Jesus came to town, before they got healed, of course. They begin to gurgle, and, and under their voice, they begin to, without a pound, they couldn't talk plain because their lips had affected the power of their mouth, and, and they were gurgling, gurgling, trying to, trying to get Jesus' attention, finally when he saw who he was. Jesus does not know an unknown tongue. He could understand the gurgling as good as he could your praying. Tears are a language God understands. When you can't say all the words, just start crying. Amen. And God knows what you're trying to say. He knows your troubles even before you ask, says the Bible. Yes, Jesus heard them. He heard them say, Master, have mercy on us. If you'll whisper that where I can't hear it, he can. If you can juggle that without me understanding what you're saying, he knows. Amen. You can say it English, say it Spanish, say it French, say it German, he knows. I may not understand what you're trying to say, but he does. Amen. You cry for mercy, I might not know what you're talking about, but he does. Yeah. I'm glad Jesus does. Well, I'm almost done. They made a gurgling sound because the power of their mouth was all messed up. But Jesus understood <laughs> what they were saying. Nine of them are racing to the priest to show the priest. One of them racing back to Jesus because he knew the priest didn't want him no how. The religious crowd may not want you anyhow. Stick with Jesus. Yeah. You never preach that crowd. One preacher told me time he said that he would preach about hell, but he's afraid to offend the brethren. I said, Brother, you're already offended, brethren. <laughs> they said, I said, I wouldn't go to church and preach about hell. I said, You won't go to church, you go to a club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Or a hall. Or a lodge. Yeah. But Jesus said, On this rock, I'll build my church. Yeah. You, not good. You, you go to a place that don't preach about hell, you ain't going to church. Yeah. I yeah. said, You ain't even going to church. Amen. Amen. I don't have to off on that, but that's this. I'd rather gurgle my prayer to Jesus than repeat the babblings of some of these religious leaders today. Yeah. If you'll just repeat after me, I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ, is the Son of God, is the Son of God. Thou shalt be saved, thou shalt be saved. Where's conviction? Yeah. Where's repentance? Where's faith? You can't just repeat words. you got a minute in your heart. That's right. That's right. Jesus, John the Baptist didn't say repeat after me. He said repent after me. Yeah. Well, as they went along, they were healed. They was liking it. I don't know about you, but I'm liking this way. I like it. <laughs> I'm an addict. Bible said over here, they were addicted to the ministry. I'm addicted to this. Thing. Amen. Well, one of them had an uncommon response. Verse 15, 16. Let me read that to you one more time. Oh, I don't know if I can or not. I'll try. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. He was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. 
He had a special, special blessing. All of them got healed from leprosy, but this man was made whole. And the Bible talks about your whole spirit, soul, and body. This man's body was healed. Bless <laughs> God, he got saved too. Shout <laughs> man. He don't just want to heal your body. He wants to heal your soul. Come on, man. Yeah, man. He wants to do it all, give it all to you. <laughs> he wants you to have it all. He was made whole, not just healed of leprosy. The Samaritan had no place at the priest, not because he had, didn't have some leprosy anymore, but he was a Samaritan. And the Jews hated the Samaritans, no matter what kind of religion you had. No matter if you're sick or not, they hate you because you're a Samaritan. Today in our society, we've got some hatred, and hatred's not a bad word. Read your Bible. God hates some stuff. Well, we've got things today that are hateful. But when this Samaritan got healed, he went to Jesus, not to the religious leaders. If you went down here to some of these churches and said, uh, let me give you an illustration, the true story. This old man, the wicked, ungodly, devil, wicked man, beat his wife, beat his children, stayed drunk all the time, gambled all the time, didn't bring no dogs, couldn't feed him, wouldn't bring no groceries, just a wicked man. Well, one day somebody got the wicked to the work. And he got gloriously born again. He came home and started hugging and kissing and loving all his children and quit drinking, quit gathering, quit running around with women, quit all that stuff, and started being a good daddy. Well, they started going around churches in town. They'd go to one of the churches. He'd say, I'm not trying to start this time. I just got to say something about my Jesus. Everybody back up and let him go. Men would shout over the house. Right. But one day he made, I don't say a mistake, but he went to the first Baptist. <laughs> and then on the first Baptist, they heard all But he had to go to a church where they didn't have much emotions. And the preacher got up to read the scripture and the elbow jumped up and said, I just got to say something about my Jesus. And he got to testify and testify and people got to cry and the preacher started looking at the deacon. The deacon said, said sir, said, you, you're about to sit down. Said, you're calling the service. He said, well, I'm going to take out my Jesus. He saved me. He changed me. I said, he said, you're a dreamer. You're, you're, you're a dreamer. The old boy said, Mr. Deacon, if he's dreaming, leave him alone. <laughs> Before he started dreaming like this, he came on beat mama, beat me and brothers and sisters. Wouldn't work, wouldn't buy no food. Preacher, leave him alone. Don't wake him up. And the deacon said, Preacher, if you want to shut him up, you do it. Amen. Yeah. Let's not pay, friend. Jesus makes a dead. Woo! It's over. Yes. Yeah. Amen. If you got something to talk about, tell it. Shout I got off subject again. Verse 16, the Samaritan had no place at the priest, but he did at Jesus' feet. There's always room at the foot of Jesus. Always room at the foot of the cross. Always room in an old time mourner's bench, an old time altar, an old time sacrifice place. A time to get on your knees and say, just me and you, Jesus. They may like me, they may not like me, but it's me and you, Jesus. A few might thought, a few might not. It's me and you, Jesus. Though none go with me, yet I will follow. Amen. Friend, listen to these old lepers one more time. All of them were on their way to the graveyard until they came by Jesus. He changed all their directions. One of them more than the rest. When he saw what this one did, uh-oh, uh -oh, here's the punchline, here's the punchline. When he saw what this one did, he said, where's the man? We looked at the deacon, and the deacon's full of the Holy Ghost. He says, where's the nine? We looked at this preacher, and he's full of the where's the nine? We looked at the song leader and the piano player, where's the nine? We looked at that there knocking on doors, passing out tracks, I mean, so where's the nine? You be the one. Whether nine follows or don't follow, you be the one. Yeah. Yes. Got something to thank God for, amen. Oh, and this old boy, yeah. Turned around and gave glory to God and thanked Jesus for what He'd done for him. Yeah. When's the last time you just got on your knees and thanked God? Yeah. Oh, I mean, you need to pray for your family. You need to do that. But sometimes just get on your knees and just thank God. Yeah. 
Let's come, God help you, let's come. Thanksgiving is a good time to be thankful. Yes. While he's still praying, let me say this. My life was heading in a downward, hell-deserving direction until I met Jesus. And I'm as saved today as I'll ever be, Amen. as saved as I've ever been. Amen. I'm on my way to heaven. Yes. Devil can't do a thing about it. That's right. And you can get the victory. You can walk in the Spirit. You can live for Christ. You can. We want to sing one more verse. If you want to get closer, you come. If you want to join church, you come. If you want to get saved, you come. But don't leave here with anything lacking because you're going to start to face that world head on tomorrow. And it don't like you. The world, the flesh, and the devil are your enemies. One more verse. One more verse.